Will you stand and let's pray, please? Father God, we just invite you into the house, Lord. We thank you for your ever presence. We thank you that you walk among us, Father. Father, I just pray that the words that are spoken, the words that are sung are pleasing to you, that they bring you honor and glory and truth. Father, I pray that our hearts are open to hear all that you have for us this morning, whether it's in the music, in worship, whether it's a time of the teaching or whatever it is you have for us today, Father, we are here for a purpose and a reason. Let us be open to all that you have in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Kind of nice to see the sun shining, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. sometimes February can be gloomy. It's not gloomy today. I wandered a weightless life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. And then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. Well, I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wander alone. Worries and fears, I claim for my own. Then like the blind man that God gave back his sight. Come on. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. Well, I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness. No more night. Now I'm so happy. No sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander and stray. Straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Yeah, praise the Lord. I saw the light, well, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night, now I'm so happy, so inside, praise the Lord, I saw the light, come on, I saw the light. I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I said now, praise the Lord, I saw the light. One time that praise the Lord. I saw the light. Yeah, yeah. Can anybody remember the day you saw the light? Can you remember the year? Anybody? Just shout out a year. 2020. Somebody else. 57. Somebody else. 72. Anybody else? Isn't that an amazing thing? You know, you remember your, hopefully your wife's birthday, unless you go to Kilgore's and they say, what's your birthday? And I go, oh. (laughs) But you never forget that day. Isn't it amazing? And sometimes you forget this birthday or that birthday. You forget this appointment or that appointment. But you never forget the day you saw the light. Because it's birth of God, amen.
comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, yeah. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name. your holy name on that day when my strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending Oh, ten thousand years and then forevermore. Come on, saints. I bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Your holy name. We will worship your holy name. Remember that day. Mm -hmm. Cause let's celebrate the Lord, Amen. Yeah. I'm sailing now. I'm giving in. Cause I'm born again All of me, Lord I'm all in All of me, Lord I'm all in Jesus gave it all On that 
cross, shed his blood to save the lost. Just like he said, he rose from the dead. So how can I not give it all to him? Well, I'm selling out, I'm giving in. I'm selling out the time for the game. All of me, Lord, I'm all in. Holy Spirit dwells in me The truth of the gospel set me free Just like you said he rose from the dead How can I not give it all to him? Well, I'm selling out, I'm giving in I'm selling out cause I'm born again All of me, Lord, I'm all in Set me free. Truth, only truth can set you free. I'm selling now, I'm giving in. I'm selling now because I'm born again. All of me, Lord, I'm all in. All of me, I'm all in. Everybody say it. I'm all in. Yeah. down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here I to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful
above all days Oh, so highly exalted Glorious in heaven above Humbly you came to the earth you created All for love's sake became poor So here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And I'm there. seated. As you sit down, will you pray with me over the children's church and Miss Lila as they go downstairs? Father God, I thank you for the gift of this ministry, for the gift of every child in this space. Father, I thank you for the gift of Miss Lila, who has such a passion and a heart for teaching them. Father, I ask you to be with her, be with the words of her mouth, be with her eyes and ears, so that she can hear and see all that you have for these kids this morning. Father God, more than anything else, let these kids understand that you love them very, very much. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I have a confession to make. The parable that Jesus told this morning, I had to read it like four or five times, six times, Aaron's reminding me, <laughs> and then maybe even more than that, and then I had to call in some lifeline support. I called Aaron and I said, hey, read this and give me your take on it, and then I called Ben, you know, Ben, Ben Lee, right, and I called him and I said, hey, read this and give me your take on it, because this parable is truly unlike anything else that Jesus is talking about in scripture. And it's an odd one to understand. Um, and honestly, it's a tough one to, to process. 
And as much of the reading, I told Aaron that I said, I've, I've done my research. I've read, you know, I have a few go-to places who are teachers that I trust to get their insight into what they're in. And, and everyone that I read had a completely different take on it. I'm like, so this is not helping. And, and so um, I took the dogs for a walk. You know, we walk the pasture fences and stuff and give them a chance to run. And I'm talking this out loud in my head. And y'all should have been there in the pasture because the sermon pasture was awesome. I hope today is, is good. But um, so we're going to read in chapter Luke. We're continuing this series to talk about these parables in Luke and what Luke has to say. And so if you have Bibles, you might want to read along with me. This, like I said, this is a tough one to process. Pastors have almost um, tried to apologize for what Jesus is saying in this because it's a tough one to understand. So we'll go through it together. Chapter 16. Jesus said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward. And an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give me an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be a steward. Then the steward said within himself, what am I going to do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I can't dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I've resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses." So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said to him, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to another one, and how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. So the master commended the unjust steward because he dealt shrewdly for the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. For he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you've not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. This is the word of God for the people of God. So can y'all see why I was confused? You know, it's interesting. So let's just talk about the storyline part of this. So in a nutshell, what's happening in this story is that there is a landowner, a wealthy landowner, and um, this landowner has a farm manager, a land manager, so to speak. And so this land manager has has been entrusted with the care and the keeping of, of his property and all of his finances, keeps the books, you know, what's been sold at market, how much is coming in, how much profit we have, all this kind of stuff. And what scripture tells us is that this land manager was, was not doing his job well at all. He was lazy. He was probably skimming a little on the side. We don't know exactly what he was doing other than scripture says that he wasn't doing it well at all. He was unjust. And somehow word got back to the landowner that this was going on. So he calls the guy in and says, hey, <laughs> you're fired. Pack your bags, bring me the books you are not working for me anymore. So the guy leaves and he's probably in a little bit of a panic. So scripture says that he's had this conversation in his head, he's leaving and he realizes, number one, he got caught. Number two, there isn't anything else he can do because he was probably enjoying the fruit of his own labor (laughs) and he's not um, strong enough to go out and do other um, manual labor. He says, I can't dig. And he's got a sense of pride about him. He's like, I'm not going to beg. I can't do that. What am I going to do? And then he hatches his plan. And the plan, I'm not totally sure he even, maybe he did. It didn't give us the actual motivations for this plan that he hatched. But the plan that he hatched was, and he knew he had to do it quickly 
Scripture says he did this quickly before everybody else that was doing business with the farmer found out that this guy had been canned, right? So he gets the books and he runs to all these people and he says, how much do you owe the farmer? How much do you owe the landowner? And so they told him, he goes, knock it down half, write it down quick, 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 quick. write this down. Log it in your book. I've got it. Okay, good. And then he goes to the next one. How much do you owe? And he tells him. He goes, okay, knock it down. And, and we'll knock that down. Okay, quick, quick, quick. Write it down. Here we go. And then he goes back to the landowner and shows him the books. And this is where it gets weird. <laughs> because this isn't what you would expect Jesus to be talking about, right? The landowner actually praises the guy for being savvy. He's like, dude, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. For the first time, you were thinking about what needed to be done. You went out and you did this. And, and part of the end result was maybe, maybe the guy that just got canned, maybe this farm manager knew that by doing this, would, this would ingratiate, it would not only ingratiate himself to the people that he just relieved their debt because now they saw him as a good guy and his thinking is at the very least they'll take me in because now they like me but it also kind of set him up in front of the landowner because what's the landowner going to do at this point he's not going to burn his reputation by going back to each of those individual tenants and saying that was wrong. That wasn't actually it. You'd actually do all the whole thing. He was banking on the fact that this guy was a just farmer, right? But then you get into the rest of the story and, and Jesus, and you're like, whoa, 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 wait a second. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> because none of the rest of this stuff makes sense. And you got to remember all of the parables that we've been talking to until this point, there's two audiences for. There's his disciples and then the Pharisees. And what we knew about the Pharisees is Pharisees like their money, right? So you got to remember who the audience is. But then I thought, okay, so the crux of this is in the last half. You've got the story, but the explanation, Jesus is trying to explain, and I don't know, 12 times, I'm not totally sure I'm still 100% on board because I'm willing to bet we can mine the depths of this parable for weeks to come. But he says, I tell you, use worldly gain to gain friends for yourselves so that when it's gone, you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with little can be trusted with much. Whoever is dishonest with little can also be dishonest with much. If you haven't been trustworthy handling worldly wealth, who's going to trust you with true riches? If you haven't been trustworthy with someone else's property, who's going to give you property of your own? You can't serve two masters. So lot, we, we, that we can understand, right? Lots of sermons have been preached on this. So then I thought, okay, this is why we have different translations of the Bible, right? So I pulled a couple of those out. Here's that last part in the Living Translation. And it says, here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. Okay. The Good News Translation says, as a result, the master of this dishonest manager praised him for doing such a shrewd thing because the people of this world are much more shrewd in handling their affairs than the people are who belong to the light. The last one, the message translation says, now here's a surprise. The master praised the crooked manager and why? Because he knew how to look after himself. Streetwise people are smarter in this regard than law-abiding citizens. They're on constant alert, looking for angles, surviving by their wits. I want you to be smart in the same way, but for what is right. Using every adversity to stimulate you to creative survival, to concentrate your attention on the bare essentials so that you'll live, really live, and not complacently just get by on good behavior. Does that help at all? A yeah. little bit, maybe. Here's where I think this is going, and I think this is where I think the message is for us. I think that this is an invitation by Jesus for us to take seriously the job and then the resources and the tools that he's given to us. There are others who take their spirituality way more seriously than we do. 
And what I mean by that is, Megan will talk about this, but I think I mentioned this before. One of the things that blew her away in her travels in Southeast Asia was the fact that they are incredibly rooted in spirituality and they are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly devoted. Their lifestyle, their choices, where they live, what they eat, what they do, the times that they pray during the day, everything is dictated by their spirituality, and yet at the end of the day, you look at what they worship and it's nothing. It's nothing. I remember, I mean, I've shared this with you before, but I remember when Aaron and I went to Mexico, we went to Chichen Itza and looked at some of the Mayan temples, ruins, and um, the, the guide that was telling us all about the Mayan temples, there was this big game playing field, if you've ever seen it, where they had, it, it was kind of like the Mayan equivalent of football, only the difference is, um, if you lost, you died. They killed you. But it was considered an honor for the gods to die. But there was at some point in history, our guide kind of explained, that where they realized that the god that they were worshiping was, not, was nothing. And it completely changed the tone of everything that they did. Then they started using slaves to, to play that sport instead of gladiators. It was no longer an honor. Can you imagine being at the point where you realize that everything you've banked your life on is for nothing? And, and I think this is kind of what God is telling us. There are, there are places where we take things way more seriously than we take our spirituality. We spend time focusing on our jobs and our finances and our hobbies. And, and all of those are good. They're gifts from God. But when they take precedent over our lives, over spiritual matters, Jesus is like people spend so much more time on this stuff than they do <coughs> sorry than they do on the things that are like faith development growing the relationship with Christ i'm going to tell you up front this sermon's going to hurt a little bit because it hurt me but i think we have to get to the point where we realize that god is way more than just some cool guy that we visit occasionally, and Sunday worship, fellowship, time with believers, time worshiping before God, time learning about him on Sunday is, is, is way more important than just coming if we feel like it. <laughs> We've got to learn to take that stuff seriously. And then the pose the question, can you be trusted with the resources God gave you? Can you be trusted with the job responsibility that God gave you? We all have those resources. We all, remember last week when Byron and the team were here and one of the things that, oh, bless your heart, thank you so much. One of the things that um, I saw that I feel like God showed me yesterday, last Sunday was all of us standing around with a tool belt, right? Are we using the tools in that tool belt? Some of us still, at this point, don't even know we have a tool belt, which is okay, we're learning, all right? There's no condemnation. Some of us know it's there, we just haven't ever either taken the time or we're too chicken to open it. That's okay, no condemnation. Pick out where you're at, right? Some of us have opened it, but we're only pulling out the one thing that we're most comfortable with. Those other tools look a little freakish. I don't know how to use them. They're a little weird. Really, I'm kind of thinking maybe they were put in there for somebody else besides me, right? And what God is extending us is an opportunity to pull those suckers out because we have a job to do. We have resources that we have been entrusted to use. <laughs> and I find it interesting that, that the farm manager didn't get serious about what he was doing until he got called out for the fact that he hadn't been doing his job. And I, you know, I think it's, it's kind of like this. So with my job, anybody's job, right? Let's say I have responsibilities, which I do. Let's say it's a particular project that my boss gives me, which happens all the time. She says, I need you to work on this. I need you to get this thing finished for us because I, kn I know that you can do it, blah, blah, blah. She, whatever. She just gives me a job to do, a specific project to finish. 
and I've got so much other stuff to do, trust me. And I keep thinking, you know, I gotta, gotta take care of the clients, I gotta, you know, I gotta take care of the, the people, and then people come up by my desk, and they're always asking me for stuff to do, and I don't wanna let anybody down. And so I just, keep, I think about that project periodically, but I don't ever pick it up until one day, my boss comes to me and she says, guess what, um, I wanna meet with you tomorrow afternoon at two and go over that project and see where you're at with it, right? And what am I doing in my mind? I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? So my response is probably gonna be, I'm gonna stay late, I may pull an all-nighter if I need to, I'm gonna get up early in the morning, but I am not showing up to that meeting tomorrow afternoon with nothing, right? Not gonna do it. Guys, that's, exa that's the story that we just read. <laughs> that's the story that we just read. That's exactly what happened. He got called out for not using the resources, for not using them wisely, for not taking them seriously because other stuff was way more important. Maybe his own personal needs were more important. Maybe he kind of got a little prideful. Maybe he kind of liked a little bit of the extra that he got to scrape off the books every month because nobody was really checking. You know, it's... it's um, I gotta be very clear when we talk about this that you understand that works will not get you into heaven. There is only one thing that will do that and it is by the blood of Jesus Christ that you get into heaven. But the Bible also says that faith without works is dead. Think about it this way. <clears throat> if I... Uh, not if, let's say Aaron and I, you know, when we were dating early and on and, and we professed our love for each other and all that stuff, right? And, and we, we even became engaged. I know, it's embarrassing. But, right, let's pretend, especially early on in that relationship, if, if we said all that and we did all that, but yet at the, at, nothing changed. I still went out with all my friends. I still did all the things I did before. I didn't really spend any time with him. I didn't take time to get to know him. How long do you think that would relationship would continue on? Not long. Not long at all. And that's why he says faith without works is dead because when you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ only by the blood of Jesus, the fact that you are now in a relationship means that you do things to honor that relationship. You demonstrate your love for him by doing the things that he asked you to do, by not doing the things that he's asked you not to do, by telling people. You know, when you get engaged, you tell everybody. <laughs> I mean, the first, we got married, the first time we got engaged, I'm walking around like this every day. I'm, I'm wiping my face, you know. Mm. Because I want everybody to know that I got a guy, I got a man, right? I mean, that's no different than your relationship with God. If we don't work on it, that relationship will never, <clears throat> you got it, right? And, and the moment that this manager is called into accountability, you see, we have a love relationship with God, and that means that God is kind, that God is compassionate, that God is long-suffering, that God always gives second chances, that God is grace-filled. And you know what? All of that is true, 100% true. Thank you, Jesus. But it is also true that God is a God of an accountability. And the manager didn't get serious about what he was doing until he realized, this is my moment of accountability. This is my moment. You wanna know what your moment of accountability is? Let me read it to you. It's in Revelations, chapter 20, verse 11. And then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered to the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. 
Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone found not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I'm going to go back to being very clear about works is not going to get you into the book of life. It is only the blood of Jesus that does that. Your salvation is secure. However, there will be a reckoning where you stand before the great white throne and he's going to look at a record of your works. Does that scare you? It should. But here's the beautiful news. <laughs> Remember the parable of the workers? They called the workers at 9 a.m. They called the workers at noon. More came. They called workers at 3. More came. They called them at 5 o'clock. More came. Guess what? They all got paid the same. That means I don't care if you're 8 years old. I don't care if you're 18. I don't care if you're 28, 58, or 88. If you're here, you have work to do. If you are here, you have work to do. And you have the tools to get it done. You have the resources to get it done. Can you take your job seriously as a Christian? Can you take it more seriously than maybe what you have? Guys, I don't know what that looks like for you. That's between you and the Holy Spirit. That's a conversation that you work out on your knees in your prayer time. And you ask him, is there something that I need to give up? Is there something that I need to submit before you? Is there something I need to lay on the altar? Is there something that you're calling me to do? Is there something that I need to step into? <laughs> is there something that I need to own or learn or embrace? Is there something about yourself that you want to reveal to me <laughs> that opens up an opportunity for me to serve you in a new and different way? Because you've heard the cliche before, he doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. Guess what? All y'all are called. All y'all. If you're still here, you're called. <laughs> You've got a tool belt. <laughs> and the challenge is, who are you serving? Which takes priority? Are you leaning into those opportunities God has for you as much or more than you're leaning into other things in your life? Because if those other things in your life are crowding out those opportunities, dude, something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. There's so much more for you. And guess what? I know what you might be feeling right now, but God is saying, come on. You have no idea what I want to show you. This is going to be such an incredible journey. You're going to get to see things and learn things that nobody else is stepping into, that everybody else is taking for granted or doesn't even want to worry about. You and I can dance together through the rest of your life. Because I want to tell you something. Um, one of the things that Ben Lee pointed out to me was that those amounts that were forgiven in, in, in um, um, the finances of that day, the equivalent in denarii was about a year and a half's worth of wages. A year and a half's worth of wages were forgiven those. Guys, I promise you that there is somebody out there walking around who is in debt and enslaved to sin and with you taking an opportunity to use the tools that you have at your disposal can set them free and forgive them from a debt that is crushing them right now. And then you'll be welcomed into their home just as much as you'll be welcomed into the kingdom with the celebration of all the people that you've helped. Does that make sense? <laughs> Now, I believe there may be more to this story, but I think this is what God is telling me that it means for us. You can't serve two masters. And if you want to grow in your relationship with God, you got to use what you've been given. <laughs> If you only have a little bit right now, use that little bit until it is dried up and drained and you know it so well and God's gonna go, yes, guess what I have for you? I have more. That's what it says. <coughs> I'm gonna end with a story, but first a drink of water. <laughs> And just to, 
a simple story about a man that said, if I had extra money, I'd give it to God. If I just had enough money to support me and my family, if I had extra time, I'd give it to God. But every minute's taken up with my job, my family, my clubs, my whatever have you, every single minute. And the same man said, if I had a talent, I'd give it to God. But I have no lovely voice. I have no special skill. I've never even been able to lead a group. I can't think cleverly or quick, quickly the way I should. And God was touched. God gave that man money, time, and a glorious talent. And he waited. And he waited. And he waited. And after a time, this story says, God shrugged his shoulders and took the things back. The money, the time, the talent. The man sighed and said, if I only had some of that money back, I'd give it to God. If I only had some of that time back, I'd give it to God. If I could only rediscover that glorious talent, I'd give it to God. Guys, let's give it to God anyway. All y'all are called and he needs you. I'm telling you, it's exciting. Amen? Would you pray with me, please, while Mark comes back up? Father God, I just break off a spirit of um, shame or any self-doubt that might be harboring and trying to work its way in after hearing this sermon. Father, I speak life over every person. I speak opportunity from heaven. I speak of exciting and amazing journeys. Lord, the fact that you don't have to, but that you love to co-labor with us. You do it because you like the fruit of what happens, but you also enjoy watching us learn the delight of being able to participate with you. So Father, I pray that that be opened in every heart. In Jesus' name, amen. sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness humble himself and carry the cross love so amazing love so Amazing. Jesus Messiah, name above all, blessed Redeemer, Amen. Lord of all, body the bread, his blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole and the veil was torn Love so amazing Love so amazing Jesus Messiah Name above Emmanuel, 
the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord. is an opportunity to give you a moment with Lord to talk about with him um, the conversation that you're having in your head because I think that there's an opportunity for you to ask for forgiveness for not stewarding maybe things as well as what you feel like you should. That journey is going to be different for each individual person. Repentance means turning away. It means asking the Lord for forgiveness and then making the commitment to go a different path. And so I'm just gonna create space for you to have that conversation with the Lord now. thank you because confession and receiving your forgiveness are opportunities for freedom. When we do that with you, it may be uncomfortable, but we get to walk away free. We get to walk away lighter. And I would say that maybe we get to walk away with a little bit of a dance in our step because of the opportunity that you have to partner with us and the fun journey that that's gonna be. We get to partner with the King of Kings. He could do it all himself, but he doesn't want to. He wants to work with us. Father, I pray that everybody just dances out here a little bit differently, walks out of here a little bit more brightly than what they walked in, knowing that they're free that they're forgiven, and that an exciting journey awaits them. Father, I thank you for that opportunity, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to be able to share stories about how God is moving and how we've been able to see him and what we've learned and what we've stepped into. 
and even sharing stories about the time where you messed it all up <laughs> and laughed and learned because you're patient and you're kind. For all that and more, I thank you, Father. Will you join me in the prayer that's in the bulletin, please? Dear Lord, thank you for fearfully and wonderfully creating each of us. Thank you for giving us worth in your eyes. Help us live as the one you uniquely intended us to be. Help us abide instead of strive, living peacefully and joyfully as heirs to your kingdom and co-heirs with Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I suggest that you take that home and read that through slowly. There's truth in that that y'all need to step into, amen? amen? All right, can I have some ushers come forward for tithes and offerings, please? thank you for the gifts that you have given us. Oh my gosh, all of them, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity we have to give back a little of the finances that you've shared with us, Lord. I ask you to bless this and multiply it. Equip us to do your work right here in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, we never got the candles lit, did we? <laughs> Oops. That's right. Um, okay, some announcements I have for you this morning. Um, downstairs, Robert Calvin brought boxes of Christian books that were in Ellen's collection, and they are free for anybody to pick up. There's a chicken soup for the soul. I mean, there, I briefly looked through them. There's tons of stuff down there. They're beautiful books. So um, you can go downstairs and look, or maybe what we can do is set them up on a table up here so that you can look through and take any of them with you. I know, books, right? Ha, huh. ha. Huh. Don't let me go through them first. <laughs> mm. But thank you for that, Robert. We appreciate that very much. Um, and so just a heads up that you can either go downstairs. They're in boxes. If you, like in the fellowship hall, if you go back through where you're going, like to the bathroom, you just walk in, you know, the, the shelves on the wall right there, they're on the bottom on the floor in some, some boxes. So if you beat me down there, you can pick through them. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll bring them up here and set them up in the back. Um, Ash Wednesday is coming up quickly. Lent is going to be here soon. So February 22nd, we'll have an Ash Wednesday service. Um, Casey prepared um, envelopes in the back, um, a contributions envelopes if you need those for taxes or end of year planning. All that stuff is back there for free to look up yours and take it with you. And Super Bowl party coming up next weekend, Sunday. We'll start at 5 o'clock. It is free to all Kansas City Chiefs fans. So. <laughs> Just say it. Will you please stand in worship? <laughs> Father God, I thank you. I love you. I am excited this week to experience you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm selling out. I'm giving in. I'm selling out because I'm born again. All of me, Lord, I'm all in. Set me free Just like he said He rose from the dead well, How can I not give it all to hell? Well, I'm selling out I'm giving in I'm selling out Cause I'm born again All of me, Lord I'm all in All of me, Lord I'm all in See you on the 19th. God bless you. Good to see you.